Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 9.4, Solving Quadratic Equations by Completing the Square. We have been solving quadratic equations by graphing, and now we can complete the square. So what is completing the square? Completing the square is the process of rewriting a quadratic expression so that it is a perfect square trinomial. Well, what is a perfect square trinomial? Here is an example of a perfect square trinomial where we have to multiply to this 9 and add up to this 6, right? We can do that by having x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3. How could we rewrite this x plus 3? Well, we could rewrite it x plus 3, that quantity squared. And this is what we're trying to get to today, right here. Now, if we look at it in algebra terms, we would take b divided by 2 and square it, and that would give us our perfect square trinomial. Then we would get to here, and all we have to put in the parentheses is b divided by 2 and square it. Notice how we divide this 6 by 2, put it right there, and we can square it. And if that doesn't make sense, that's all right. We're going to look at a couple examples here and see what we can do with them. Now we're asked to solve by completing the square. And when we complete the square, guys, it's a lot of steps. There's about six steps. Think of the process in steps and not in what numbers you're working with, but in steps. So in number one, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that there's no number added to this 16x. So there is nothing past this negative 16x. So after that, what we can do is divide the b term, we're going to divide whatever is attached to your single variable, the b term by 2 and square it. So it's going to go ahead and look like a negative 16. We're going to divide that b term by 2. We're going to square it. So keep going here. We have negative 8, and that is going to be squared. Negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. Now with this 64, a big key here is to add it to both sides. So I'm going to add 64 to both sides. And after I add to 64 to both sides, I'm going to rewrite my equation. So it's going to be x squared minus 16x plus 64 equals 49. Now I have my perfect square trinomial right here. I'm going to try and factor this. What multiplies up here adds up there. Well, that's going to be an x minus 8 and x minus 8. And that's going to equal 49. How many of these do we have? We have two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and go x minus 8. That squared equals 49. So now you have a square. How do you undo the square? Well, we can square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, now we have x minus 8 equals a what? A positive negative, positive negative 7. When we have a positive negative 7, we can set the x minus 8 equal to the positive 7. And we can set x minus 8 equal to the negative 7. Now we have to solve for both x's. So we add the 8 over here. So x equals 1 on this side. And then over here we add it over again. x equals 15. So we have two solutions right here. And those two solutions are 15 and 1. Notice really quickly that we could just divide this 16 by 2 once we get that perfect square trinomial, this 16 by 2, and plug it in right to the square. I'm going to keep pointing that out as we move along. Now here in number 2, we have to make sure that this x term here is all by itself. So I'm going to add that 3 over to the other side. So it's going to be x squared minus 2x equals 3. This is how we want to start it. Now, what was my next step? I divided the b term by 2 and squared it. So it's going to be a negative 2 divided by 2, and that's going to be squared. That gives me a negative 1 squared, which is 1. I'm going to take that 1 and add it to both sides. So it's going to be plus 1 here, plus 1 here. When you add it to both sides, rewrite your equation. So now it is x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 4. I'm going to rewrite this in two binomials. So it's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 1, that equals 4. Rewriting this again, I can go 
x minus 1, that squared equals 4. Notice if I divided my perfect square trinomial, divided it by 2, I would get 1 and plug it right in. Now how do you undo a square? You have to square root both sides. So a square root both sides to get x minus 1 equals a positive negative. Remember your positive negative 2. Split the positive and negative apart. x minus 1 equals 2. What else do we have? We have x minus 1 equals a negative 2. Solve for both x's here. x equals negative 1. On the green side, x would equal 3 after we add it over. So we have two solutions again, which would be 3 and negative 1. Let's try a couple more. Stick with our steps. What were our steps? Well, notice how I added a 9 to a negative 6, so I'm going to subtract the 9 to the other side. I'm going to subtract it here and subtract it there. So I come up with now x squared minus 6x equals 11. Now what do we do? I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide this 6 by 2 and square it. So I have a negative 6 divided by 2. I square it to get a negative 3 squared, which gives me 9. I'm going to add this 9 to both sides. And again, we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 20. Now, can we factor this? Yes, we can. Multiplies up to 9, adds up to negative 6. That's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3. That gives us 20. We have two of them. So it's going to be x minus 3 squared equals 20. Now, if you notice, this was the same as this. If you notice that we could have factored this right here into this right away, immediately, you could have done it. But I did not, so I subtracted the 9 over. I found my uh, what I had to add to both sides, and then I factored it. Now, how do we undo the square? We have to square root both sides. So I square root this side, I square root that side to get x minus 3 equals 2. Now, this is going to be a decimal, and where do I have to round it to? The nearest tenth. So that decimal is going to be plus minus 4.8. So now I set x minus 3 equal to a positive 4.8, and I also have to set it equal to a negative 4.8. Solving for my x's, I add it over here to get x equals a negative 1.8. And then for the blue, I add it over again to get x equals 7.8. Both are your answers. Now looking at 4. One more example here. With 4, what do I have in front of my x squared? I have a 2. Notice that I didn't have any number here or in the other two examples. What should I do with this 2? I need to get rid of this 2. So I'm going to divide every single term. I'm going to divide every single term, and one more time, every single term by 2 to get rid of that square. And you also need to divide 0 by 2. So now our new guy is going to be an x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. Now once you did that, we're going to repeat all those steps and it's solved exactly the same way. So I'm going to add the 4 to the other side to get x squared plus 10x equals 4. Now I'm going to divide that 10 by 2. So it's 10 divided by 2. I'm going to square it. Then I get 5 squared, which gives me 25. So now I am adding 25 to both sides, all right, following all those steps. New equation is going to be x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 29. Rewriting, I have x plus 5 times x plus 5 equals 29. I have two guys. I have x plus 5, and I can square those. That equals 29. Now, again, look at my B term. After I wrote my perfect square trinomial, if we, can, if we forgot how to factor this, that's fine. What you have to do is divide your B term by 2, 
and put it right in for this spot here. And now all we need to do is go ahead and square root both sides to get rid of that square. So now we have x plus 5 equals the square root of a 29, remember is positive negative, and we can round to the nearest tenth, 5.4. Solve for x, x plus 5 equals 5.4, and then we have the other one where it is x plus 5 equals a negative 5.4, if I can fit it on the screen, subtract the 5 over here, so x is going to be just a 0 0.4, and then for the blue, you subtract it over again. So x is going to be a negative 10.4 for your two solutions. And then finally, we have our steps to complete the square. So if you haven't picked on them yet, I'm going to show them to you right here. Number one, we divided out that a term. Perfect. Two, we put the constant on the right side of the equation. So we put the number, that's the number that you subtract to the other side of the equation. Then you add b divided by 2 squared to both sides. You write the left side as the square of a binomial. Take the square roots of each side and then solve. And now I'm going to cover one more quick thing. How do we find this c term that makes the expression a perfect square trinomial? So what did we do early on? We have to take b, divide it by 2, and then square it to find our c. So c is going to be 8 divided by 2. We square that, so that's going to be 4 squared, which is 16. So here, c would be 16. It would look like, if we had to rewrite it, x squared plus 8x plus 16. It would look something like this. Looking at number 2, again, we have to find our c term. We want to divide our b term by 2, so it's 5 divided by 2. That's going to be squared. Now, 2 does not go into 5 evenly. If it doesn't go into evenly, I want you to write it still as a fraction. So remember how exponents work when we divide. It goes there, and it goes there. So we have 5 squared over 2 squared, and that turns into 25 over 4. So this would be our C. C would equal 25 over 4. Why do we want to leave it as a fraction? Because it is a lot easier to see what we have to factor, or what it factors into when we leave it as a fraction. Trying one more. Again, we're looking for C. So what do we want to do? We want to go 3 divided by 2, because it's the b term, we square it. 2 does not go into 3 evenly, so the 2 has to go to the 3 and to the 2. So it's going to be 3 squared over 2 squared. That gives me a 9 over 4, because we're squaring it. So now 9 over 4 would be the c that we are looking for. So if I plugged it in, this guy would look like x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. We could factor this guy then into x plus 3 halves and x plus 3 halves. And that does it for section 9.4, solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Good day!